right, God bless every one of you. Wherever you are watching me from, viewing me from, God bless you. This is another uh, transforming God encounter that is about to cause a shift in one's life and to your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God will bring every one of us to a place of meaning and essence where our lives will be furnished. In the name of Jesus, make sure you share the broadcast to a friend that will share to a friend, to a friend that will also share to a friend. Click the share button, it will show copy, then copy the link and paste it on all your social media platforms as well. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Do that now. And God bless you. There's a burden in my spirit. Once God places a word in your spirit, it becomes a burden that has to be lifted up. I have a word in my spirit. Now let's go straight to the word. Genesis 42, verses 36. And Jacob their father said unto them, Me have he bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and he will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. I want to speak on the subject when things are against you. Why? Because Joseph is not, Simeon is not, and now they are coming to take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. And that was a cry of Jacob their father. He, no, even as old as he was, he still he was bereaved because emotions, emotions are, are always the same. Emotions don't change, and emotions don't understand age. So someone at the age of 200 can still be bereaved of his children, of his loved one as well. So that's what happened. And he said, "Me, have he bereaved?" And you know, when once you are bereaved, it means there must have been, you know, the, the loss of the. the a loved one, someone died or the death of someone you were very close, could be your friend, your whatever. And so you have to be bereaved. And when one is bereaved, it also comes with tears and being mournful as well. So he was telling them, me, have you bereaved? Because Joseph is not. Simeon is not. And so you guys, why are you still coming for Benjamin, the last born? All these things are against me. Have you ever been in such condition before? Someone died and someone died and then, then you guys were left, like two people were left behind. And then you now look at your brother, your sibling, getting sick and lean and, and becomes lean and leaner and leaner, you know, by the day as the day passes by. And at that point, your, your hope begins to shrink and you get so confused. All these things are against me. Or you wait for a job in interview and you were told that you did well. They invited you and then something happened and then you withdraw. These things, all these things are against me. It happens to every one of us. We, you, you must have placed your hope on something and your hope was so high on it as well. And then something happened and then it got you so broken devastated as well. All these things, all these things are against me. We know the, the story, you know, when you know Jacob, you know, got married to her two wives, Leah and Rachel, and God did bless Leah. She was putting to bread, she was you know giving bread to children. But Rachel, the Bible says God that God had shut her womb. And it got to a point that in Genesis 30 verses 1 that when she saw that she could, she could not or she could not conceive that she held on to Jacob and said, give me children or, or I die as well. And then it got to a point that she had to uh, go to one of the men, brought a maid to Jacob, just like what Sarah did, who also gave Abraham Aga a maid to sleep with. So the same thing also replay. And she said to build her and said, just come and sleep with my husband and then so that he can have children. Probably so that she could also nurse them as well. In Genesis 30, 22, Bible says, and God hearkened unto Rachel and then God opened her womb and then she gave birth. And the first baby she gave birth to was Joseph in Genesis 32, verses 24. You know, after putting to bed and gave birth to Joseph, she said, said, the Lord shall add to me another son. So Joseph means addition. Joseph means addition. So when Jacob said, Joseph is not, what he was saying was, no more increase. Addition is not. Simeon is not, and now you want to come 
for Benjamin and he said all these things all these things are against me all right so so that so, so, so that's the story so Joseph means addition he said God shall add to me another son it will not only end with Joseph God is going to give me another son I'm praying pray for you now that God is going to give you a major surprise a major surprise that will become uh, the foundation for other miracles God is going to give you something like Joseph that will give birth to other children to other breakthrough in the name of Jesus I say God's favor is going to give you a major su surprise that will become the foundation for many other miracles it's not going to stop with Joseph you are going to have more it's not just going to stop you know just that marriage you're going to have children not just the children they will go to school and they will make it as well if your amen is louder where you are then the miracle will be faster amen all right so, so that's what it means and now you see when joseph was growing the father was so uh, much in love with joseph probably because he was a son of his old age and it happens in reality the way you see parents uh, falling in love with the last bonds as well and because most times they think you know since they are just coming they need to be guided through and and all that and so jacob fell in love with joseph he loved him so much and also why he also had to love him was because Every now and then, when the brothers, when they were committing, they do anything that has to do with evil, Joseph will now come and report them to the father. So this was a godly, a godly child as well. And also a God man, because God was with him. The promise God told Abraham in Genesis 15, uh, verses 13 or thereabout, and said that your, your seed will become, you know, slaves in a foreign land, that is Egypt. And they'll be afflicted for 400 years and then after they themselves will come out with great substances so for that prophecy to come to fruition joseph was you know singled by god and this is through god's sovereignty or the time of counsel that joseph was chosen as well and so whatever joseph is facing is going through there has to be a fulfillment of god's prophecy because joseph will have to be catapulted to into egypt and will become a prime minister and there'll be famine in Canaan that will, you know, draw their attention to Egypt. And before you know it, all of them will leave Canaan and all of them will land in Egypt. That's where they will stay so that the prophecy will come to manifestation. All right, now, now Jacob made, you know, to, uh, for him a coat of many colors. And because of that, the brothers, they hated him the more. That triggered, you know, the brothers hatred and they became fretted and also enraged as well and so they hated him so much because you know it was easily noticed or noticeable like you know if you have children and you you want to be like you know like a father you want to show some you know favoritism you want to have your favor right there's no how the race will not notice that they will notice and see a boy that comes and said my my mom doesn't love me i know she loves my brother more than me it's very and you know it's very common it happens and you yourself hearing me you must have had such encounter where you know that your 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 your, your father love your sister more than you or love your brother more than you so that's what happened and so he made him that coat of many colors that was love that was displayed not only only be defined love is not only to be defined where you where you come and give divinations it has to be displayed not only in the abstract but also in the concrete so that it can be read upon as well. That is love. So yeah, love was made tangible because what is said has to be seen. I love you will have to be seen. And what is seen will also have to be felt. And that is why it was made tangible with the goods of many colors that can be that can be felt. And you know, something also happened. Immediately, the father gave him the, the goods of many colors. Joseph began to dream. Joseph did not dream, not until he was given the coat of many colors. You know, Jacob being uh, one of the patriarchs, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Jacob was so you know, knowledgeable in the things of, of God. And he, he did, you know, have you know, encounters with God so many times. And so Jacob, 
you know, understood what would happen in times to come, that there would be something like the law of separation. In Deuteronomy 22, verse 11, you know, there was this law, Mosaic law, where God told them and said, you, you people should not make garments of diverse sorts. So like what I'm putting on now, then in Israel, they were not supposed to put something like this on you know, themselves. And so even their field, you can't plant more than one kind of crop. So that if you are entering into a field and then you see only one kind of crop, then you know this is a Hebrew field. But when you see like two, like assuming you have cowpeas, beans, rice, then you know this is the foreign land. This is not the Jewish land. But by this time, you know, the days of Jacob, there was no such law. So baby Jacob was able to pick spiritually what would come in times to come. But others would, would have to wait till when the law is given and then they will know that they are not supposed to you know, wear a garment of diverse sorts. Do you get the point? And that was, you know, prophetically as well, where you are able to, you know, tap into the corridors of divinity and then you download it or you download that, you know, uh, divine intelligence. Someone else will just be waiting for things to happen. And while it's you yourself, you are aware of what will happen as well. So by or giving him the coat of many colors. What Jacob did was he was conditioning Joseph so that Joseph would become compatible with the realities of his future. That garment, coat of many colors, that was for the, the foreign land. It was not for the Jews or the Jewish people or the Hebrew people. And so the coat of many colors was a conditioning that was training because such garments could only be found in a foreign land, not in a Hebrew land as well. And so, so Jacob was spiritually was away of what will happen or what Joseph would become. That is why when Joseph had a dream and saw how, you know, they were gathering shapes, his brothers, they also gathered their own shapes and he, got, he gathered his own but you know suddenly his brother's shapes stood round about him and they made obeisance to him to his shape then he also had another dream and saw how the sun the moon the stars also you know made obeisance to him and he went and told the father and also the brothers you know they when he went and told him the dream they hated him the more because probably he thought that by telling him the dream that they would love him you see, nobody loves you by what you tell them. Anytime you had a dream, you want to share without your friend. And in your mind, you believe by telling him or had a dream that they will love you the more. Some can even make a mockery of you. When they see you coming, they say, yeah, ah, this one has come again with his stories, with his dreams. And so be very careful. And also, every now and then, don't, don't forget what I just told you now, that people don't love you by what you tell them. And so that was a mistake he made. To me, Joseph was more a prophet than a politician because if Joseph uh, was to be or were to be a politician, he would not have told them his dreams. But he went and, and, and poured out everything, you know, all he had, all he saw. He probably he could bring them together, they could love him. And then, you know, they also became afraid of him. Why? Because hearing his dream, the picture of the dream was that Joseph would become their Lord, would reign over them. And which was in reality what would, uh, would have to play out because the event of his dream would have to uh, you know, give answers or answer to the prediction or to the prophecy or the interpretation as well. Do you understand what, what I'm saying? And so Joseph was more, you know, more a prophet than a politician. And all he saw had to do with the future, what he would become. So he was able to uh, foresee his preferred men, and, but he was not able to see his imprisonment. He saw his promotion, but he didn't see the prison, that the prison also, the trials were also, were also coming. And it happens to, 
to the, to the young younger generations when you know a child is growing up and immediately once that uh, uh, that sit in the world what they want is pleasure prosperity no nobody cares about what would befall them and so you see the younger people now somebody will tell you i don't want to suffer i've been suffering since when i was a child <laughs> i've been suffering so i need where i can stay where i can settle down and enjoy all the pleasures and you know riches of this life so when joseph you know you know told them the dream the father had to pay attention to him he watched him carefully and that is why i said that you know joseph or uh, jacob knew what would become of him and he was watching he was watching him very well and don't forget he started dreaming when they gave him the coat of many many colors and so one day the father sent the the brothers and said go and take care of my sheep and so they went to shake him and so when they got to shake him now they've been there for a while now the father now came to joseph and said go and see how your brothers how they're doing and so when he got to shake him he did not see them then he met a man who was who was there and the man saw him wondering and said what is the issue and he said i've been looking for my brothers they came here to tend my uh, father's sheep that's the flock and the man now told him that they have been that they have gone to Dothan. And so Joseph being, you know, uh, a dutiful, as in dutiful child, obedient child, he still went ahead to Dothan. And you know, Joseph did not have issues with, with the brothers. He did not hate them. Because if by the time he showed up at Shechem or in Shechem and didn't see them, he probably would have gone back but he still went ahead to Dothan and when he got there you know in Genesis 37 I think verses 18 or thereabout when they saw him from afar they said behold the dreamer coming the dreamer coming it happened to a lot of us when you are going to meet your friends you don't know what they say behind you they can they can say ah this one just got married and look at this, a dreamer. Look at the visionaire. Look at the career woman and, and all that. That's what they did. They said, Behold, the dreamer coming. And so they conspired against him. They conspired against him. They wanted to kill him. But that was his, the firstborn, Reuben, you know, heard them and he said, No, let's not kill him. Let's not kill him. And so he delivered him from their hands. They would have killed him. And they said, You know, we will kill him. And then we will cast him into the pit and will pretend as if you know he was devoured or you understand by a wild beast or evil beast as well. So you see how wicked, how brutish people are. Even you know, human, how evil they are. And of course, if you know if you read your Bible in I think Numbers 19 from verse 11 or there about back in those days, uh, where if somebody dies now and then you touch some a dead body they were to stay for seven days and within that seven days you're unclean until they are washed but if like an animal dies and now and mistakenly touch a dead animal you were to stay people were to, to stay you know uh, till the evening just a day till the evening but if it has to be uh, a dead human being you have to stay seven days. So you now see that the brutish or the animal in men is seven times. Yes, seven times the the normal animal that's the brutish in men, the wickedness in men is seven times that of the animal. Because just consider you know this evil beast, they don't prey on those of their own kind. So why do you want to kill me? Because we are one. And all of them, this is brothers. So they were joined by, you know, a blood of consanguinity or by blood ties as well. These were brothers. And you want to tear yourself apart by killing your brother. And so Joseph, immediately he got to wear the way just to probably come and look at what they were doing. The first thing they did was in Genesis 37, verses 23. 
The first thing they did was they stripped him of the coat of many colors. So that means their issue was that coat of many colors. So the first thing they did, you see, this is one of the ways of losing your Joseph is when the coat of many colors is stripped of you know himself or of him as well. Joseph is not, Simeon is not, and now you've come to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. So I'm going to show you just three ways of you know losing your Joseph. And one is when the, the coat of many colors, the garments, that was a covering. A lot see you don't have a covering. The Bible is speaking in Isaiah 62, verses 6, and said, Behold, said, I have set on your walls watchmen who will not hold their peace day or night. So some you are just going to touch, there's no covering. There's no covering. You are not accountable to anyone, even God Himself. Because one, you as much as all of us, you are accountable to God. If you don't have relationship with him, you are wasting your time. Let's leave men for a while. And so when they saw him, they stripped him of the coat of many colors. That's the first thing they did. <laughs> but you know, God had this young man in his mind. And so you can take what is on me, but you can't take what is in me. You can take what is on me. The garments, there's no problem. But you can't take what is in me and of course we know the story that when they took the coat of many colors that they tore it into pieces and they cast him into the pit and that speaks of darkness and now they had to sell him he was sold but god had a plan for him because they thought they were selling him not knowing they were sending him god had a plan for him say god had a plan for him and so they took the coat of many colors. You see, all these things were, were God's plan, were God's program. Because when the Father gave him the coat of many colors, he started dreaming. But you can't go to Egypt and be dreaming because Pharaoh is one of the achievers of men who dreams a lot. So in Egypt, what they're looking for is not dreamers, they're looking for interpreters interpreters not dreamers this is what happened immediately they took off the you know the coat of many colors and joseph stopped being a dreamer and became an interpreter i said joseph he stopped being a dreamer joseph automatically became an interpreter there are certain things that will have to leave you for you to see the light of the day there are certain coverings that have to be taken off you and for you to be able to match or walk into you know dimensions you know godly dimensions where god has kept for you there are certain things that will not happen in in, in your life until the coat of many colors is taken off and i'm praying for you any coat of many colors that that, that looks like a veil is catching fire now in the name of jesus whatever looks like a veil like a veil like a veil as that 25 verse 7 i said on this mountain that the covering of on, on, the, on the faces of my people shall be removed, shall be taken off. And I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Every demonic covering, every demonic covering hindering you from becoming what God had ordained you to be is catching fire now in the name of Jesus. And so Joseph, you know, it is not written in the Bible that, you know, after when they took the coat of many colors that he had dreamed, he did not dream again. That was the end of his dream. Joseph automatically became an, inter an interpreter. He became an interpreter. And you know, in Egypt, what they're looking for? They're looking for interpreters, not dreamers. Because Pharaoh, every now and then, will be dreaming. Pharaoh will be dreaming. And you know, there are ways you can lose your Joseph. Like what I said, when, when he came, they, you know, they, they took the coat of many colors. All right, this is what has been giving you age over us. This is why, you know, the Father loved you so much. And they became so enriched. Do you know why we are watching me now? Most of you, there's something God has deposited in you, and that can even cause people to be envious of you. The the Father gave him that covering, the coat of many colors, and that alone attracted, you know, people's attention. 
it attracted war, battle. That some gift you have, that some gift God has deposited in you, and all you you thought was, you know, with this gift, nobody will come near me. I will be so 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 astounded, not knowing that what God gave you was not just for you. You know, that some gift God will give you, and this gift they themselves become a center of battles. Where battles, where trials, temptations have been drawn towards the gift as well. So that is what happened with the good of many colors. There's something you, you just got married and people people began to you know envy you. You just got a new job. Why is you didn't have what to do? Nobody came, nobody called you to know how you are faring. But immediately you, you got a new job and they heard about the news. And now everybody, every all eyes are on you now. Hatred, left, right, center. Why? Because of that coat of many, that coat of many colors. And of course, you know, this coat of many colors can, you know, can speak of a lot of things. It can speak of a lot of things as well. That was a covering. That was a covering. And so the, the first thing they did was to take off that covering. What the devil is coming for is to take off that covering. That's what they want, that covering. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high when once you are out of the secret place then you are done that's how samson died he had relationship with god he started well but he did not end well because he left where he was supposed to be to stay the secret place is not a casual place it's not a careless place where you enter and you leave you enter and leave today you are in relationship with god tomorrow you are in relationship with the devil today you are in God's presence tomorrow you are somewhere today you are in church tomorrow you, you are in a, a native doctor's place as well it is not a careless place it is not a casual place and so they went, when, when he came they stripped him of that garment of that garment that was a covering you know this is a coat of many colors so that coat of many colors must have had white on it and white speaks of purity. Be you holy for, for I am holy. You know, when the brothers, anytime they commit sin, he will go and report them to, to the father, the evil they did. And that's why the father loved him. And they must also, must have been red on, 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 on the garments. And red speaks of, you know, this is blood, with redemption. Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sin. So Joseph was carrying not just a garment, this way, dimensions, prophetic dimension. There must have been black on the coat of many colors. And black speaks of the evil one. First John 4, verses 4. Say, little children, ye are of God, and ye have overcome the evil one. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the, the garment may also have had gold on it, and gold speaks of riches. I was speaking in one of those chapters in Job. And said you will lay up gold as dust and gold of fire as a stone of the brooks so jacob knew what he was doing that garment may have had yellow as well so he knew that joseph would have to go through trials and temptation you know yellow is associated with fire look at the flame with fire with fire first peter one verse seven and bible says that that the trials of your faith being much more precious than gold, though it be tried, that gold be tried, you know, with fire or in fire, and might be unto praise, glory, and honor at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the yellow speaks of, you know, uh, it speaks of trials. And so Jacob knew that Joseph would have to go through a lot, for we must pass through many tribulations and enter into the kingdom of God. God makes people through adversity, through uh, affliction. No wonder why David said in one of those times and said, yes, it was good that I was afflicted. Say, it was good that I was afflicted. This good of many colors must have had something like, like, like brown, you know, brown on it, because this was the good of many colors. And brown speaks of the earth. Psalm 24 verses 1, the earth is the Lord and the fullness and the fullness thereof and the fullness and the fullness thereof there must have been purple scarlet on this same coat of many colors and of course you know purple speaks of royalty first Peter 2 verses 9 ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation 
a peculiar people. And so that speaks of royalty. There must have been a color like blue. Blue on this coat of many colors. Of course, you know, blue speaks of the Holy Spirit. It speaks of purity, God's presence as well. And blue is also, you know, is also linked, connected to healing. Joseph would be wounded, but God would, will heal him. You know, in Numbers 15, 38 to 41, when God told them to make, you know, the, the, the prayer shawl, you know, the, the sitsi, the tassel, the color was to be, was supposed to be blue, was to be blue, not supposed, a blue color. And so that has to do with healing. And the woman with the issue of blood will have to stretch her hand and touch the tassel, the sissy, that's the blue color, for healing. Joseph would be wounded, would be injured, would be hated, but then God will have to heal him. There must have been a green on the coat of many colors. Of course, you know, when you want to have green, green will have to be a combination of blue and yellow. Blue also is the word of God as well. So there has to be, when you mix blue with, ye with yellow, what you have is green. So yellow is trials, temptation. Uh, blue is the word of the Lord. When you use the word and survive your trials, you become immortal. That's immortal as well. That's immortality. So green speaks of immortality, like Psalms 1 verses 3. It shall be like a tree planted by the riverside and it bearing, you know, uh, 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 fruits in due season and the the leaves that's the green leaves with a red knot as well you see so green speaks of immortality so there must have been green on the coat of many colors you know i told you what is green that green speaks of immortality probably there was also amber that speaks of you know purity holiness and so when jacob said me i he believed but joseph is not uh, Simeon is not, and now you've come to take Benjamin. He said, All these things are against me. Now, you, you now see what Joseph, Joseph means addition, what Joseph was carrying. And so the first thing they did was they stripped him of his garments. What the devil wants to do is to take that covering, that covering. The devil wants to take you out of a secret place so that you don't have anything. It could be you have a ministry you are submitting to. I don't have issues when people are, you know, you know the, the uh, fatherhood of a thing, the spiritual father, there's no issue with that. But the only issue is when you have a father in the Lord and, and the control over you is absolute, that's when it's wrong. Because it is only God that has absolute control over us, not men. Like you're submitting to someone now and what he does is Anything you want to do in this life, you must tell him. Career options, you have to get to him. Spousal choices, you want to get married, you have to, to get to him. Everything you want to do in life, you have to get to him. And if you don't tell him, they get angry. That's when it's bad. That means your, your father in the Lord, what he's doing, that is an absolute control and it's wrong. That's when it's not nice. It's only God that has absolute control over men. And so maybe you have some someone you submit to every now and then he prays for you and if he is you know in the prophetic and god shows him something about you he calls you and says, this is what i'm seeing of course you know by a prophet they were delivered by a prophet they will also preserve so deliverance is not always enough you need preservation i say you need preservation and so once there's no covering you are open to any form of attack and I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that nothing will pull you out of your secret place. I said nothing will take you out of that your secret place in the name of Jesus. And so Joseph can be gone. Joseph can be lost if there's no covering. Remember the story of the baker and the buckler in Genesis 40. And this one had a dream and told Joseph. Joseph interpreted the dream. And now when the baker saw that the dream you know, the interpretation was so good. I now, he, he now told uh, Joseph his own dream and said, this is what I saw in my dream. I had three baskets on my head. In the uppermost, you know, part of the basket, there were big meat of all kinds. 
for Pharaoh. And then when the birds of the egg came and they eat of those fruits and all that, those baked meat. Now Joseph told him and said, you had three baskets on your, on your head. That's because of three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from off thee and then will hang thee on the tree and then the breast of the egg will come and eat you. Do you know why? Because in his dream, he saw himself carrying three baskets, open basket. This basket was not covered. There was no covering. Three things the baker did not do. Then I preached some years ago. There was no covering. And so the base of the egg, they came now and they fed on it. And that speaks of his dead as well. I believe you understand what I'm saying. Once you don't have a covering, once you don't have a place, a secret place, you don't have a prayer life, you don't study the word, you are not drowned in the word, you are prone. In fact, you, you are open to all forms and kinds of attack. I am praying for, for you. If you have one, if you have one, if you have one, I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that no power on earth will take you out of your secret places. If your amen is louder where you are, then it will happen faster. And so they stripped him of his garments. <laughs> Genesis. I don't know who wants to strip you of your garments, of your covering. The Lord will arise for you. I say, God will arise for you. In verse 24 of Genesis 37, don't forget, number one is when your covering is no more. And now the next thing they did was they cast him into the pit. They cast him into the pit. And you see, this was a dry pit, dry like a dry dungeon. There was no water in it. So what they had in mind was for him to stay there, uh, probably get you know, suffocated, and then he died. Nothing, no water. And of course, you know, he was begging them, he was pleading. Because when you read Genesis 42, 21, when they finally went to uh, Egypt and they met Joseph, they didn't know that it was Joseph. Now, Reuben was telling them, you, you know what we did to our brother? How we, that he was pleading, he was breaking in the anguish of his soul. So what we are facing now is because of what we did to him. So he was breaking them. He was pleading with them, don't kill me. And you know, I can just you know feel the, the pain, what he was going through. Being killed by your brother. This is not an outsider. Like somebody comes now and then from outside and shoots you and whatever, and might butcher you. It's different from when this is your brother. You went, you, you went to, to meet him. And then they arrested him. They bundled him. They took the, 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 the covering and they cast him into the pigs. You see, once you lose your covering, you can't have light. You are in darkness. They, the first thing they did was they took the garment. That's the covering. That's why don't, don't let the, the, the devil lay hold on your covering. I'm telling you, that's why Jacob would have to fight with the angel. He fought with the angel till the daybreak. He didn't let him go. He said, let me go for the daybreak. That's what the angel told him. He said, just let me go for the daybreak. And since Jacob did not, so he had to, you know, he, he, he struck him, you know, on, on, on the side and smote him and so that he was limping as well. So when God was running out of time, he smote him. But then he blessed him. Most of you, you have people that looks like, you know, this is a covering. God is using someone and is praying for you like an intercessor. People who are born bearers, you know, intercessors are born bearers. People who have the, you know, that ability to isolate emphasis or burden from God's mind and then they now give it to others. And most of you, 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 you play with such people and then they are gone and then you, somebody will sit and say, ah, I don't need anybody. I don't need, I don't want to be under anybody. There's no issue with that. There's no issue with that. Some of us, our helpers, there's any helpers, they left us long time ago because we were not able to sustain them till the day break or till the breaking of the day. Like when Jacob would sustain the angel, he kept him in battle. They smote him, he was limping, but he was still standing. 
you just had a friend that you know came to you was nice and something happened the next thing you flare up and you broke up and after you go and sit down and say i can survive without anybody who told you that <laughs> don't you know that without men god will not without god man cannot as well every man makes a man even god needs a man he said i i was looking for a man to stand in the gap so most times when people are coming to your way be very careful they send them enough and know this is this one is from god so sustain them they are staying in the breaking of the day they can smoke you some can say some nasty things you don't like but still keep them do you understand because your name will not be changed from jacob to to israel to the dawn of the day and so you have to stay in the place of battle in the place of war with this man that's a deep thing i'm just telling you so when you have people that come to your way don't just out of anger i don't want this person no you can't be my friend no i don't like the way you are doing the way you are behaving sometimes you have to give people time a bit seriously stay sustain their stay till the breaking of the day you may be limping but still stand they need to understand what i'm saying and so when they strip him of his garment and they, they they cast him into the pit once you lose your covering automatically there's no life you're in darkness and that's why you see people die like chicken somebody will just die like i don't even know because most of them they had no coverings you know i've been saying that people die because they don't have intercessors nobody stood in the gap for you you would have survived you didn't have someone probably who would have called and said i know you are going hard the lord showed me that you will have this on your way you will meet this on your way you'll meet this on your way like when samuel was telling saul what he would you know what he would see on his way before getting to his father's house so you will see a banner prophet you will see two you will see this and all that because you didn't have somebody who interceded for you that's why and that's how people die and so no covering and so they become blind and blinded to their own environment in whom the god of this world has blinded their mind that's the devil's job once there is no covering you are gone you are in darkness so they cast him into the pits and then after you know he was being thrown into the pits now they would have killed him but now judah now came and said what will it profit us if we slay our brother and then conceal his blood <laughs> say what will it profit us if we slay him and then conceal his blood so the picture was that you know it, it is less guilt less of guilt but more gain to sell him do you understand what i'm saying he said what shall it profit us if we slay him that's what judah said because the israel are becoming so better let's just sell him let's not kill him what will it profit us what will be the, the gain by killing him and then and then conceal his blood of course you know when they cast him into the pit they sat down and they ate bread they were eating amos would come amos 6 and said they drink wine in big or large bowl and anoint themselves with the chief ointment and that but they're not grief for the affliction of, of joseph so they sat down and they were eating bread that's what people do the day you are gone they will come for your burial and they will just sit down and they'll be eating drinking you see people going to a burial of a young man 25 24 years and people will, will shouting give me drink the guy is gone give me drink so what we eat because someone is dead now that's what they did they cast you into the pit and they'll be eating bread i'm praying it will not be your portion i said it will not be your portion in the name of jesus how can you cast your, your, your brother into the pit and you will so 
they were so comfortable e e enough to sit down and relax and they were eating bread and they, they were not they were not grieved for the affliction affliction of joseph amos 6 said so they were not grieved for the affliction of joseph and you see what they did didn't there was no conscience nothing they were just okay and so it is less guilt and more gain to sell him because if we sell him at least we didn't kill him so there'll be nothing like you know guilty conscience we just sold him so it makes it less guilt uh, but more gain to sell him and so it was Judas who opted for a Joseph to be sold so by selling him the picture is if we can sell him for a slave uh, then there's no way Joseph will become our Lord he will not reign over us because selling him will make him you know a slave for the rest of his life <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying they, they saw your vision they knew that you become their Lord but they don't want and the best way was for them to sell you out so that you will not become their Lord because you, at that point you become a slave, a servant. You can't become, you can't. But you see, God already had strategized things and put things in places. And of course, you know, it rather sometimes God's uh, providence uh, seems to con contradict God's purposes. God's providence seems to contradict God's purposes, even though or even when the providence is saving the purpose and working at a distance for its accomplishment. It looks like Joseph is dream were not coming to pass. Behold, the dream are coming. And if you were Joseph, how would you have felt at that time? As if what you saw was was just, you know, a mirage. It was, you know, it was fake. It was not God who gave you that prophecy. But later they didn't know that God was, you know, planning things, putting things in, 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 in places. All they did was well orchestrated by God. Psalm 76 verse 10 say the rust of men shall press thee but God will restrain the remainder of it the rust of men they can plan to kill you but they will not succeed in killing you because God will restrain the other thoughts of them they wanted to kill him Reuben stood up and said let's not kill him now they cast him into the pit they would have slain him Judas said let's sell him and of course, you know, Jesus would also be coming from the tribe of Judah. When Christ is coming, they will also have to sow him as well. So Joseph here is a type of Jesus. Joseph had 12 brothers. Jesus had 12 disciples. Joseph was hated by his brother. And Jesus was hated by his own people. He came to his own and they received him not. Joseph was loved by the father. Jesus also was loved by the father as well. Joseph hated sin. And so when they committed sin, you will have to report them to the Father. Jesus also was not in love with sin as well. That's why every now and then he, he would have to condemn, not just to condemn, to speak against the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all of them. Remember when Joseph was cast into the prison after Potiphar's, you know, uh, wife's, you know, accusation, he was placed between two guys, the baker and the buckler. Jesus had the cross would also be placed between two thieves, two criminals, one on the left and also one on the right. Of course, you know, Joseph also, you know, at the, at the prison with them, interpreted their dreams. He interpreted the dream of the baker or of the buckler who was restored back to his position and also interpreted the dream of the baker who was killed. And Jesus on the cross also would have to interpret the dreams of the two thieves. Uh, one of them would be remembered in paradise and the other one would be lost completely and so yeah, Joseph is a type is a type of Jesus and so now with this Joseph is not and Simeon is not also and they are coming for Benjamin all these things all these things are against me is there anybody here still still here with me Joseph will be sold for 20 pieces of silver and Jesus also will be sold for 30 pieces of silver it was Judah who stood up and said, let's sell him. When Jesus is coming, Judas is carried also. Like the same name, Judah, the Old Testament and Judas in the New Testament that will also sell him. Christ will be sold for 30 pieces 
pieces of silver as well. Joseph was cast into the pit and was also led from one prison to another. Jesus also would have to go through the same judgment. And so Joseph here is a type, is a type of Christ. The father sent him and said, go and meet your brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God also sent Jesus to a sinful world. Now, now when Joseph was coming afar, they said they conspired to slay him. Jesus also would uh, uh, pass through the same thing because they would also conspire against him just to kill him, and which they did as well. So Joseph here is a type, is a type of Jesus. And so by taking Joseph, these things, all these things are against me. These things, all these things, all these things are against me. When things are against you, And of course, you know, when God visited him, when Joseph was placed and became the prime minister in Egypt, when the brothers visited him, you know, he forgave them, all of them. He said, what you did, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. It was God sending me here so that I would be of help to you all. And Jesus also at the cross will forgive all those who, 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 who spat on him, who smote his face and said, Father, forgive them for the... No, not what, what they do. <laughs> so Joseph is a type. It's a type of Christ. I believe you are blessed. And so they, they cast him into the pit. And now, now they had to, they, they sold him. And when they sold him, that's what happened. When you don't have a covering, so Joseph will be gone. No covering, no covering. Spiritual covering. No secret place. No relationship with God. You are in darkness. You are in a pit. And what is left is just to be given out. That, you know, when they sold him out, could be your death, could be your sickness, could be anything. You could be stripped off of anything. They took the coat of many colors, your covering. They cast into the pit, you are in darkness. And then they sold him. At that point, you become prone to anything. You become so vulnerable to anything. Somebody can come with, you know, all this, you know, minor uh, the scheme, a demonic scheme, and, and you become a victim. They can use chance on you because at that point, you were sold out or you are sold out. You are vulnerable. No covering. You are in darkness. You don't see what is happening. You are just laid to and fro, carried by diverse winds of doctrine. And it happens, it happens in reality. Because you, you are not vested in the world. Somebody will come and tell you this. Don't do this. Stop doing this. Stop paying your tithe. Stop giving this. And then you, because it suits you, feel it suits you. That's what sin does. Yeah, sin comes with deception. So what they did, they thought it was, it was over. Nothing will happen. Nothing. And, they, and in fact, they, they didn't even re remember that even time itself, you see this time, time itself. It's not powerful to erase that which is known from eternity. I said time is not powerful to erase that which is known from eternity. Time will not wear out you know, the gears of sin and will not blot out the records of conscience. Time will not wear, wear out the gears of sin. And so when they did that, you know, they sold him to the Ishmaelite as well. And and they took the, the garments. They did not use the garment to, they just tore it into pieces. I thought they would use the garment. I got married and you were not happy about the marriage. So you, you went and manipulated and did something and my husband died. And so I thought you would come and, you know, marry the wife. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? Someone got married, the, the wife died. And the person who killed the wife, they don't go I hate to marry the husband. I do hear people say, if I don't have him, nobody else, no one else. And sometimes you get to a point where they can even kill you and say, yeah, I don't have a Of course, it happened. So let's just, in fact, by the time we kill him, everybody loses. I don't want him again. Let him just die. So, they took the garments and they tore the garments into pieces. 
And now they took, you know, they kill, uh, they kill an animal and pour the blood on it. And now they took it home. You know, Reuben later came and 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 you know he was scared because Reuben, being the the, the, the firstborn, wanted to uh, make sure that Joseph was safeguarded and so, so that he could bring him to the father. If there's any of them that would have been so afraid or so jealous of Joseph, it should have been Reuben. Because being the firstborn, you should have been scared. Probably, you know, when father is dying, I think this Joseph, second to last born, could be, you know, bestowed upon, you know, uh, by many favors than me. But it was not. It was trying to, you know, at least protect him as well. But then, you know, this was God's providence. So there's no way Reuben could have done that to the end. Because God was involved. Uh, if, if Reuben had stopped Joseph from being sold, there's no how the prophecy would have been fulfilled. And so they took the, the garment, they killed an animal and poured blood on the garment. And then they took it to the father. When they got to where the father was, they said, does this look like your son's, you know, goods or clothes as well? That was a mockery. They were making a mockery of him. You know, like they knew what they did. And of course, I don't know whether they are guilt or they are, oh God, I wonder how their countenances did, you know, hit their, their guilt. Because you just sold the brother out and then tore his clothes, killed an animal and poured the blood and, and you're taking it to your father. It should be seen on your face that, you know, that, you know, uh, fear, that fear should have been on their faces, but it was not. And they tried to condole the father. And they said, is it your, your, your son's clothes? As, as if they, they don't know or they didn't know. And the father saw it and said, oh. And he was wondering that he was, you know, devoured by a wild animal. And so they brought the coat of many colors to the father. This is the coat of many colors. But there was another color. There was another additional color. And that was a bloody color. Is there anybody hearing me? I said there was another color. This was coat of many colors. When they slaughtered the animal and poured the blood on it, they had, in fact, they had to, to eat another color. That was a blood, bloody color. That's, that's how sin is. It takes you further than you wanted to stay. That is sin. And so by doing that, they were trying to conceal what they did. That's what the devil does. He teaches you how to sin. And when you sin, he now teaches you how to conceal the sin. You've committed the sin, but now you don't want anybody to, to know about it. That's what the devil does. He teaches you how to cover your sin. And of course, you know, all of us, we've learned about them how to cover transgression. Job speaking in one of those jobs and saying, For if I have covered my transgression as Adam, like how Adam did, so all of us will learn of Adam to cover our transgression. That's why I said that time is not powerful enough to erase that which has been known from eternity. And time will not wear out the guilt of sin, I'm telling you, and it will not also blot out the records of conscience. Whether you, you kill someone, you did this, and it looks like you don't have a conscience, there's no problem. There's no problem. <laughs> and so that's what they did. And so, Jacob now became so, so, so worried and said, me, have you believed of my children? He was so bereaved. He was so bereaved. He said, Joseph is not, he's not. And now Simeon is not. And now you have come to take Benjamin. Don't forget, Joseph means increase. I don't know who took your increase, your addition. Your Joseph is coming back now. In the name of Jesus. You know, when Joseph, you know, when they sold out Joseph and they came and told the father, you know, he started, you know, like, you know, 
he must have felt so bad. Do you know why? Because it was Jacob who sent Joseph to them. He must have felt like, oh, this is, uh, just look at me, how I use my own hand to kill my, my son. Even while if they, they blame it on, you know, a wild animal. And I believe every now and then every night, a, a Jacob will be sleeping, he will be having that, that images of how Joseph was trying to proudly defend himself before a wild animal. And so, when he sent him to his brother, you see, both Joseph and Jacob, the father, both of them, they had more of the innocence of a dove than of the wisdom of a serpent. I said, both Jacob and Joseph, you know, by sending him, he did not know. So they were not wise. That was be, be, be wise as what? The serpent, harmless as what? As a dove. So both of them, you know, they had enough or more of the innocence of a dove, of, of the dove, and than of the wisdom of the serpent. Because if they had the wisdom of the serpent, Joseph would not have been their victim as well. But this way, you know, through divine providence, and he said, me, I keep belief because my addition, my increase. David speaking in Psalm 71, verse 21, the thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Whoever wants to stop your increase, they die now in the name of Jesus. Your increase has returned. Your increase has returned. David praying in Psalm 94, verse 17, and said, establish thou the works of our hand. Establish the works, the works, the increase of our hand. That increase, that increase, nobody will stop it in the name of Jesus. Whatever is an added advantage to your life will not be taken away from you. I said, whatever gives you advantage in life will not be taken away from you. In the name of Jesus. There are helpers God must have added to you. Helpers, helpers, helpers. But through the whispering of the Nagas of men, they left you behind. After now, after now, they are coming back in the name of Jesus. Joseph is not, my increase is not. My increase is not, I'm not doing well again. No increase. You used to look very nice, very handsome, very beautiful. But now, you, you, your body has turned to something else. Because there's no more increase. Your business is not moving, it's not growing. Your, why? Because your Joseph is not, is no more. But God is about to bring back your Joseph. I say, God is bringing back that your Joseph in the name of Jesus. So your Joseph is about to be restored in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are at the hospital now and you are receiving treatment and it, every now and then it looks like your body is going down. It's you know, deteriorating instead of you recuperating. It's because your Joseph is not. God married and then there's no issue. Joseph is not. So no addition, no increase. Maybe you, you only have one issue, one boy or one girl. And every now and then you look at your neighbor, you feel so bad as like you know you wish god had blessed you like he did to them as well why because joseph joseph is not joseph has to do with increase with addition whatever took your addition your increase your joseph is restored now in the name of jesus you know you can be working like an elephant but you're not earning but it, what, what what is coming in it doesn't really make sense and all these things are against you these things because Joseph is not because Joseph is not and so your this one your increase is not then you are struggling you are you, you are struggling but all things work for good to them who loved God to the call according to his purpose so both the good the bad and the ugly is about to work for your own good in the name of Jesus your Joseph your this one is about to be restored your health your this one is about to be restored you've been working and no promotion for years why because Joseph is not and all these things is against you no promotion, no promotion, no addition. You know, a promotion speaks of addition. Means you've been increased, you've been, you know, there's that, you know, augmentation. And when it is not, all this is against you. Your Joseph is about to be restored in the name of Jesus. And in that um, um, Genesis 42 verse 36, and he said, Simeon is not also. Genesis 29, 30, 30, when uh, Leah gave birth to the second uh, son, she called him Simeon and said, Because the Lord had hearkened unto me. I was hated. The Lord visited me and hearkened unto me. And so she named him Simeon. Simeon means to be heard, and the Lord hearkened unto him. God will hearken to, to the voice of your cry. I said, The Lord, when you pray after now, 
your voice will be heard in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when God heard their groaning, the groaning of the children of Israel, God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because they were heard. And in the days of his flesh, Mark, Hebrews 5, verse 7, after Jesus had made, you know, supplication with strong tears, the Bible says, he, he, he was heard in that he feared, he was heard in that he, you know, he was said in that he feared, so he was heard. You will be heard after now. I said, You will be heard after now. You will be heard after now in the name of Jesus. Put online, I said, My Simeon, my Joseph has returned. I don't know who took your voice. Who took your, your voice? God is about to restore you. You are not an echo. You are a voice, not an echo. When they came to John and said, I doubt the Christ, he said, No. Are you a prophet? He said, No. Are you Elijah? He said, No. He said, Who are thou? He said, I am the voice of one who cried in wilderness. Repay you the will of the Lord and make straight his path. You are not a noise. Any man without a voice becomes a noise. You are not a noise. I say, a man without a voice becomes a noise. You are not a noise. You are a voice. Not, not just a voice, but a voice to thousands. A voice among all other voices. In the name of Jesus, your Simeon is restored. That is your portion. That is your, I say, your Simeon is restored. Simeon is restored. Simeon is not. What gives a man recognition is you know the, the the ability of being heard do you know you can have a family meeting because you don't have what to show like you know there's no money and then this one who has money now stands up now and begin to speak people will pay attention because he has something he has you know he has a substance he has something and so your voice is what gives you recognition they took your addition and now they're coming for your recognition it will not happen i say it will not happen it will not happen they will labor in vain it will not happen in the name of jesus after now when you speak people will hear psalms 18 verses 14 david said as soon as they hear me they hear of me they hear of me they shall bow as soon as they hear of me said they shall bow when you speak people will obey they will bow in the name of jesus job chapter 29 from verses 4 he said as in the days of my youth when the secret of the almighty was upon my tabernacle i said in those days when the almighty was here with me and my children were all around me were about me in those days when i speak a word he said the young the young men they hid themselves the ages stood up and they arose princes will have to put their their hands on their mouth those days you know when job was so blessed he said as in the days of my youth when the secret of the almighty was upon my tabernacle and in Job 29 verses 21, he said, Unto me, men gave ear. They waited and kept silence at my counsel. Kai. He said, After my words, they speak not. And my speech will have to drop upon them. He said, They waited for me as for the rain, and their mouth opened wide as for the latter rain. So in those days, when Job was speaking, everybody they had to keep quiet. Even princes, they had to put their hands. In their mouth as well why because he was head i say he was head you will be head after now you will be head after now you are not a noise you are not an echo you will be head after now in the name of jesus you know echo like when you speak and then your 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 your, 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 your voice your sound you know re echoes it that has to do with repetition you speak mm, and then it comes back to you so echo has to be repeated so it is not until that you know when you speak two times three times and then and then you are heard twice that is that is echo but you are not an echo you are a voice that has to be heard just not twice but once is anybody here still hearing me so you are a voice you are not an echo you don't need to speak 10 times like echo you have to wait for you know that uh, reflection of your uh, uh, of no, no, no the sound wave from or on a plane surface but when you speak once, it is it. And you see, your voice is so original. Unlike Echo, it's not original. God is about to restore your Simeon. God is restoring your Simeon, your recognition. When you speak, they will pay attention. They will give years to your word. Like Job said, men give years. He said, they waited and gave silence. And my word dropped, my speech dropped on them as well. So they waited for him. They had to wait till... He was done. I'm praying for you now that your Simeon, your Simeon that was not, is restored now in the name of Jesus. Your recognition is restored now. The community, wherever, any organization you find yourself, you will not only be announced, you will not only be recognized. When you speak, 
they will not only hear they will bow and they will do your biddings in the name of jesus simeon is not because this was famine in canaan and so jacob sent his sons and said go and look for food and they went to egypt so that the prophecy the dreams of joseph might come to fruition as well whatever dream you had whatever dream but nobody will be able to stop your dreams because god is involved you know this dream just about this with big big dreams and of course you know when if your dream is not big enough to scare you then it is not a dream it is a nightmare you have to wake up as well so when your dream is not big enough to scare you you're not scared of your dream then it is not a dream it is a nightmare you have to wake up as well I'm praying for you that God will give you bigger, bigger dreams like Joseph in the name of Jesus. And those who hate you will be alive to see what God will do in your life in the name of Jesus. So when they got to Canaan in Genesis, when they got to Egypt in Genesis 42, you know, Joseph was a prime minister and they didn't know him, but he knew them. And he had an interpreter. He must have learned the language. This is almost 20 years later. He must have learned the, the, the Egyptian language. And then so he he took them for spies and said you guys are spies you have come to you know to see the nakedness of the land and he sworn by the name of pharaoh and you know they were afraid they said no they start telling him their stories that we are 12 the 12 brothers our father is old is a jet man and our last born is also with him then one of us is not and that was joseph and he was looking at them and he said it's okay for me to believe what you're saying one of you will have to be detained and then the rest you can go and bring your last born because joseph you know there were only two joseph and benjamin because he must have thought when he left that they, they probably they had also killed his brother and so that they could wipe or their their, their their name could be you know wiped out of you know jacob's lineage as well and so he said go and bring your last brother that was benjamin and he said no he's the last one we can't he's with the father and so he put pressure on them and so he had to put all of them in wards in prison after three days he said oh, now you you have to go and now he took simeon in front of them and bound him and put him you know in a prison as well that, that was when simeon was detained also so simeon simeon is not and then so he gave them food what they came for you know they came with money he let out return the money and put in their sack as well and when they got home they discovered that they are not even home halfway to their house they discovered that the, the money they paid for the the foodstuffs were still in their sacks in their back as well and they were scared because already their brother simeon was detained is with him and so when they got home they tell they told jacob everything that had befell them and he said now so what what is happening and he said the, the the man said we should come and bring our last brother and so you know he told them go and bring your last brother so you could have that access to traffic you know in in, in the land to move you know around or bad in, in the land as well and so jacob now would not want to take such chances and said joseph is not but joseph was there and simeon is not simeon is also there and now you want to come and take benjamin he said all these things against me me have the belief of my children all of them are gone and you see jacob oh, i pity J jacob because he was crying he was you know be mourning to people who are behind what is happening these are the same people that they want planning to kill you and you still wait and told them your dreams <laughs> do you understand what i'm saying you know while he was talking to the children later they didn't know that all this thing that befell them it was because of them because if joseph was not you know a so loud all this thing would not have happened but this was you know divine providence as well things are happening now you are you are the one still going back to them and telling them your problems you are telling them what is happening you oh this is what i'm i'm, I'm facing and that the one orchestrating what you are you are facing i'm praying for you now in the name of jesus anybody with your information anybody using and want to use your information against you i smash those information into pieces in the name of jesus if they have information i have something else have you not read in your scripture they shall come in one way but they shall flee in seven ways they shall gather not by me for your sake they shall fall and scatter the nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters god shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and they shall be chased 
as a child of the mountain before the wild wind and as a ruling thing before the wind i am praying for you in the name of jesus that information of yours in the mouth in the hands in the archives of your enemies are broken into pieces they are smashed into pieces in the name of jesus and not you know the, the, the devil was on information he said i've got said in genesis 3 he doesn't know anything he works on probability and god said so by the time you start lamenting he takes all of that information and uses against uh, against you whoever has been using your information what they know about you to fight you and end has come in the name of jesus your simeon is restored i say your simeon is restored simeon is restored your voice is restored in the name of jesus and so they came for benjamin so that Simeon could be released as well and he said this thing all this thing is against me and now Reuben had to say if I don't bring back Benjamin slay my two sons you know he fell he tried to protect Joseph but he couldn't and now Simeon he could not and he said if I fail to bring this one Benjamin now slay my two children and you see Benjamin was the last born Rachel was bad not until God visited uh, Rachel and then opened her womb and then she put to bed the first child and she gave birth to was Joseph and the second was Benjamin in Genesis 35 but you see something happened in Genesis 35 while she was traveling the Bible says her soul was departing so death is when the soul departs but when people are dying it's the departing of the soul the Bible says in Genesis 35 verses 18 while she was traveling you know the midwife was giving her hope you no know, the baby is coming you can't you can do this you can do this but her soul was departing and in you know in the anguish of her soul and she named the boy benoni um benoni means the son of my sorrow you know and of course you know in reality children are enough you know the sorrow of their mothers especially in breeding them nursing and also in bearing them as well because any child that is born it is always in the anguish out of the anguish of the mother's you know soul something has to be lost and so she named him benoni b-e-n-o-n-i which means the son of my sorrow but jacob would not allow that do you know why because jacob would not you know because he he, he knew that Rachel was dying so if Rachel is dying and this boy is named Benoni the son of my sorrow every now and then I see this boy or I call him Benoni the the the, the death of a mother that you know a painful you know encounter would be renewed in my memory and so Jacob was so you know was swift enough and had to change the name from Benoni and said no he shall be called he shall be called Benjamin and Benjamin means the son of my right hand it means the son of my right hand by the son of my right hand and of course you know children speaks of the future so when he said the son of my right hand the right hand is support so what will support you in years to come is your child the son of my right hand the son of my inheritance and so you want to take the son of my right hand who will take of me when I grow when, when when I when I grow old at my old age who will take care of me and so he named him Benjamin and then Rachel died and was buried and so Joseph is not Simeon is not and now you've come for my right hand my supports they took your addition your Joseph they came for your Simeon, your recognition. Anyway you entered, nobody paid attention to you. Even you had some helpers, there's any help, helpers, you used to call and they will send you money. A lot used to pay your bills, but now they're not listening to you again. When you call them, your, your voice becomes like a burden. And most of them will see your call and say, this one has called again. Why? Because your Simeon is no more. And all these things are against you. If you had people like that, they used to call them. And they were like your backbone but over time when you call them they, they stop picking your calls no attention they didn't give you attention again you were like a burden and so have you ever called someone before and he was telling you he or she's telling you you know i have also my i have my problems too i have some bills to pay 
I will get back to you. And some of them will keep you for years. That that's some that don't even have your number. Again, you call them, they said, who is this? Why? Because of Simeon is no more. And now they succeeded in taking Joseph, your increase. They came for your recognition, your voice. You lost your voice, your recognition. And now I think that should have been enough. But why are they coming for your future? Why are they coming for your future? And they are coming for Benjamin. And he said, these things are against me. Do whatever you want to do. Don't play with my destiny. Do whatever, say whatever you want to say about me, but don't joke with my destiny. The joy of destiny does not, that, that's certain things you don't bring into, into people's future. Attack me if you, if there's no problem, but don't get near my destiny. Don't get near my future. And so you can't take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Do you know, a lot of people are suffering because, you know, when they lack, when there's no parental care, it becomes an issue. That people who, you know, when they, they were growing up, they discovered or they were told that, you know, your, your, your mother died, you know, while, uh, you know, a child birth, that your mother died. And most of them didn't come to see, grow up to see their father. And so they can, they could do anything just to survive. And some of them thought they didn't have you no know, a future. Some joined, you know, cultic group. Some became robbers and all that. And most of them were wasted. They died because they had no, you know, uh, parental care as well. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you that your Benjamin will not be taken away from you. Your future will not be tampered with. They tampered with your decision. They tampered with your with your recognition. And now they are coming for your future. It will not happen in the name of Jesus. Remember the woman of Nain in Luke, whose son died. And while the, the people, the undertakers, they were carrying the, the corpse, Jesus came by and stopped them and then raised the boy. That was a battle. Probably the husband must have, you know, must have died. And now they wanted to take the boy. But Jesus came and said, no, God will not agree. God will not agree on your behalf in the name of Jesus. The Lord will not agree on your behalf. It will not, it will not happen. In the name of Jesus. And so, you know, you know they were going. You know, where you are coming from, this is your husband. This is your, your, your children. Your husband is where you are coming from. That's your husband. But your children is where you are going to. And so the husband probably uh, uh, must have died. And then the boy was about to be buried. They were going for his burial. The place where the boy was to be buried. Jesus now stepped in and raised the boy. Nobody will tamper with where you are going to, your destiny. I said nobody will tamper with where you are going to. If they want to do that, they want to try that, God will bring them down in the name of Jesus. David speaking in one of those Psalms and said, He will give unto us our inheritance, the excellency of Jacob whom he loved. Your portions, your inheritance will not be given to another. Benjamin means the son of my right hand. My inheritance, your inheritance, your portion on it will not be given to another. It will not be given to another. I said it will not, it will not, it will not be given to another in the name of Jesus. If your amen is louder, it will happen faster. I don't know the battles you are in. I don't know, I don't know the battles. I don't, there are a lot of things against you. When, when, when things are against you, all this is against me. They came for Joseph, they, they succeeded. They came for Simeon, they also succeeded. Now they are coming for Benjamin. The Lord will put an end to this in the name of Jesus. Joseph will not only be restored, Simeon, recognition will be restored. And your support, and your support, your support, your support, your support will also be restored. Your future will also be restored in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for all of you in the name of Jesus. Whatever you've been battling with, they took your Joseph, your Simeon, and Benjamin. You know, the story all ended well because all of them left Canaan. And they got to Egypt. And then Joseph, you know, revealed himself to all of them. And they, you know, they cried and all that. And he forgave them. And then they were all together so that the prophecy might be fulfilled. What God had for you in store will be fulfilled. It's fulfilling already in the name of Jesus. When things are against you, whatever is against you, it will work out for your own good. In the name of Jesus, you will come up strong 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 and healthy 
the sick be healed now. You are sick now. Stretch your hand towards where, where I'm saying that you are healed. I release grace upon your life. Grace for healing. 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 Once power is going to be is released. You are healed in the name of Jesus. The sick be healed. The sick. The sick. The trouble. The trouble. The trouble. The trouble be made stable. You don't have peace. Every now and then you're thinking so anxious of how tomorrow will look like. Peace be still in your home. Peace be still in your home. In the name of Jesus, your increase is returned. Your recognition is returned. And then your future is restored. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. When things are against you, I believe you are blessed. And you were blessed. God bless you. Don't stop sharing our broadcast. Subscribe. Most importantly, my name is Evangelist Ekom Silas. God bless you.